Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And today is no different. We're going to talk about that and some other things as well. So on my docket today, I have the pattern rollout for this beautiful cardigan. It's a summer cardi. It's called Summertime Cardi. And that's what I named it. And the pattern is out today. If you look in your inbox, you'll see a discount code and a place to go and look at some pictures of that pattern. And it's out on Etsy as well. If you're in the community, you'll have a, uh, a nice discount code that you can use for this pattern if you're interested in purchasing. Now, I also have a knit crate opening today. I have a whip in pro work in progress that I want to show you as well. I also want to talk about the diamond paintings that I had framed. I promised that today. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to show them up close. And I'm going to show them on the wall so you kind of get an idea of where I place them in my home. They're not all just in a gallery. They're spread around the house. And that's what I do with my artwork. If I do an embroidered piece, I get it framed or I frame it myself and I put it right on the wall. And usually I have a little spot that I have in mind for it, but sometimes Mr. On the Hook and I will just walk around the house and he'll say, why don't we put it here or why don't we put it there? And we make a decision, hang it up, and then we can enjoy it because it was something that I actually made for our home. So instead of putting it away in a bookshelf or in a pile, I try to get things up on the wall. And then eventually I might move those things off the wall and put something in place. Just depends on how many crafts I'm into. And uh, usually that's a lot of crafts, but most of my crafts have to do with crochet and it's wearable crochet. So it goes right in my closet. And I rarely ever uh, give things away. Sometimes my daughter will come and I might give her some things that she wants, but usually they just start lining up in my closet and I have a lot of sweaters in my closet. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them all. I know I won't have uh, an occasion to wear all 60 patterns or whatever they are, scarves, hats, sweaters, tops, long sleeve, short sleeve, cardigans, all that. I have a lot of those in my closet. In fact, they're all in my closet and some of them are still folded up in winterized boxes from last winter. So um, I, I put those away and I got my summer things out. It, you know, I made room in my closet for them and I display them so that I can see them and I can pick one out to wear uh, to a certain occasion. And I did buy some hangers that are padded and you'll see these on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description box. There are hangers that are padded and they're really pretty. They're a floral print and they're so padded that you can hang an our article on these and they don't get those um, folds in the shoulders like that. They don't come out like that. They're very, very nicely done. And I, I think they come in a pack of 10 or 20 and they're very well worth having. You can even hang a blazer on them or um, a, uh, a winter heavy wool sweater you can hang up. And I haven't had any problems with my wool sweaters hanging them in my closet. And that way I can see them and I can grab one to wear out or run errands in. I always try to get the ones out for the season that is coming up. So that said, let me introduce the pattern that I've been working on for a while. This is the Summertime Cardi. And I made this with flex yarn. And if you've been to Michael's, you will have seen this. This is a very large ball of yarn. It's 590 yards. It's half and half uh, acrylic and polyester. It's uh, not anything natural, but you know, I wore this summertime cardi yesterday all day. I went out for a little while and then I came and I wore it all day at my office. It was very, very comfortable. Now underneath it, I had on a blue, shirt it's a short sleeve shirt and i did get a little warm today i'm wearing it with a tank top see so i'm wearing it with a tank top and it's very very comfortable i've not gotten hot in it the first time so it's you know it's finding its way into my wardrobe and i'll know how it's the most comfortable to wear again this is flex yarn not sponsored this is michael's 9.99 a ball i got this for 5.99 and you've, it's, it's the brand Loops and Threads. I'm sure you've seen it if you're a crochet or a knitter, um, but it's Flex Yarn. And this color is the color Light Gray. And uh, it's very nice, it's very subtle. It goes with pretty much anything in your closet. And some of the flex in here are yellow, 
and purple. And those are the two that I see the most um, are yellow and purple right there. A, there are a couple of those. And uh, it's all through the yarn. So it does give the yarn a little bit of interest. So let me stand up and show you my summertime cardi. Okay, here I am. I wanted to model this for you because it's uh, a boxy cardigan. Now, you don't have to make it this way. You can certainly make it uh, closer to the body. I like a loose fitting cardigan because um, I, I can wrap it around myself if I'm cold or I can just push it aside if, it's, if I'm not. And it's, um, it can show your shirt underneath and it's not all buttoned up. So I did not put any buttons on this cardigan. Now, you could easily do that by sewing a button on the left side of the border here and then using this edging around the button and you could put it anywhere you wanted to. That would be very, very simple to do. And I just didn't want to do that because I don't like uh, to disturb the edging and I also just like it to be very, very casual. So I made this to be a, a casual cardigan. It's just called Summertime Cardi and if you look in your inbox you'll see an email from me that has a link to this pattern and so you can um, go out and take a look at it. It's a, a very casual but summertime overpiece and it has short sleeves, they're not long, you can of course make them longer if you want or shorter if you want to. And let me show you the back. The back is very very boxy and I made it to come down right at the bottom of my hip. Now my next cardi will probably be very short. I'm thinking about making a very short summertime cardi out of something uh, cotton, maybe and very, very lightweight, maybe even a shorter sleeve, and just to kind of have a little something to wear over a tank top. If I'm going into a store or a restaurant, I don't want to just wear a tank top. I'm just really not doing that anymore. So uh, I like to have a little something to throw over my tank top. So that's what I'm going to do with my next time through and I always recommend that y'all make these patterns and any other patterns that you purchase or find on the internet make them twice if the first time was a success the second time is going to be awesome because you can change it up the way you want you can make two different types of tops out of the same pattern so this is the same way I also in the pattern wrote an optional um, edging for this cardigan to uh, for maybe a beginner or someone who is a little intimidated by um, something different this is a different kind of stitch here and you have to set it up and then you have to put the stitch on and you have to put the front post edging on there so it's not for a strict beginner who has never really made a garment it's you might make it in the easy optional edging and then maybe give this a try on a swatch even. Sometimes, sometimes I do that just to kind of get a look at what the stitch is going to look like. So you can do that if, if you want to. There's an optional edging and also an optional sleeveless version. So you don't have to make it just like this. So you can make it several ways actually. But the length of the cardi, the width of the cardi, and the sleeve treatment are all up to you. And the, and the edging are all up to you. You can change those up, and so it's a pretty versatile pattern, actually. So it's going out on the web today. It's out on Etsy right now, I'm sure. Um, I've already released it by the time you see this video. And uh, you'll have the email in your inbox if you're in the community. If you're not, please... Uh, sign up for being in the community. It's free. You get a free pattern as soon as you sign up. And all the free things that I send out, not a whole lot of things, and I don't email you every week or anything, but I do email you when I have a pattern release, and so you're the first ones to know that that's out there, and you can go take a look at it. So I'm going to leave that right there. This is the Summertime Cardi, again, out on Etsy. Now, moving along, I want to talk about Knit Crate. I have received a Knit Crate bag in the mail. Knit Crate is not sending me a box and I can understand that. I'm okay with that. But I did order one and I did not get it. So maybe next month they will um, send me a box. I don't know. But I wanted to open this up and show it to you because uh, sorry for all the noise. Let's get that out of there. Let's put that away. 
This is the book that came in the box. It's called Inspirations Book, of course, and this is Happy Little Skeins. This is for May of 2021. So Happy Little Skeins is the name of this box bag. <laughs> box bag. And there's some cute little pictures in here. And they give an actually um, an overview look at all the colors that were available. And I don't remember if I selected a color or they just sent me one. I don't know. I don't keep up with that anymore. If they say to go out and select one, I usually just let them send me whatever they have. I don't really mind that. And this, this month I received the color clouds are very, very free. It's 90% opaca, 10% cash, cashmere in a worse way. And I believe that is right here, that color. It's the gray color. I would have preferred a color color, but you know, it's no big deal. I like gray. Gray is fine with me. And then the three sock colors are here and they're gorgeous. I like those colors, but I really don't want any sock yarn. I don't make socks and to make a, a wearable crochet out of sock yarn is very, very time consuming. And you could probably double it and all that, but I'd rather just have the worsted, which is fine. And then they give a recap of all the patterns in this book, which is nice. This is a new feature. This is the knit cowl and then the crocheted hat right here. It's a slouchy hat. It's really cute. And that might be a nice project for a beginner or an advanced beginner. And then a pair of socks in knit and a pair of socks in crochet. I looked at the slouch pattern and it says that this pattern is made with a G hook and it's worst of weight yarn. This is a pattern by Ashley at Heart Hook Home. Heart Hook Home. I've looked at her website. It's been a little while ago, but it looks like the uh, pattern is very, very simple. It's only one page. So it's, it's very, very easy. It looks like uh, there are only 32 rounds and most of them are repeats. So that's not a problem. I, I do like the hat though. Here's a close up of the hat and you can get ahead on your winter crocheting if you wanted to try that. I do love the knit crate boxes. I have several that I haven't done anything with. I, I'm probably going to save those for fall and winter and may go out and buy a, a little more yarn and have a sweater quantity or just make a cowl or something out of them. These are I have two hanks of this and this is what they sent me. It is beautiful. All their yarns are quite gorgeous. This is the, the, the brand this month is Chill. It's Audine Wools and again it's alpaca and cashmere. It's very 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 soft and they're 150 yards on the hank. So I have 300 yards of worsted weight wool and I've, I'm sure I can find something to do with this. So this will go in my stash and I will ponder what I'm going to do with this for the fall. I might make myself a beautiful scarf. I just really love scarves in the fall. They're so comfy and warm and when they're made from wool they are really very very warm. So I will probably do that. Now a little extra that was in here uh, in the box. They usually send something extra. There are two stitch markers in here and I'll probably hopefully you can see those. There's a little yellow kind of a gem looking thing, a little bead on the bottom and a pretty little flower here. And uh, yes, they are easy to use for stitch markers. So it has a rather large connector on the end like that. And I don't have a problem with those. They're not my very favorite. I like um, a different kind. Let me show you the kind that I really have grown to love. Um, is this kind right here. You open these up like that. And what it, these are much easier to get off of your uh, work than one of these. And because these get hung up. Let me show you the difference here. These get hung up on your stitches. I, sometimes I can't even get them off. I have to really work at it. These are very, very easy to get off your stitches. So those are the kind that I prefer to use, but I will put these right in my stitch markers and use those. I'm sure it will be easy to use and probably on something even with a smaller yarn might be a little easier. It could be that I'm using it on a large yarn and they get hung up in the, the middle of the yarn because the yarn is thick. So that would be my reasoning probably for using the other kind on a large yarn. This looks like it might have a really nice drape to it. So that'll go in my stash and I will be looking at that 
until fall. Now, progress on a whip that I'm working on. And I did a little work on this this morning and I really like it. Again, here's another one of those favorite stitch markers. And it has that special top on it that's easy to get off your work. Uh, this is a what's called the soft linen tee and this is probably my last summer top pattern and uh, it's a it's a pattern that is not real fancy but the yoke is fancy and I really like the stitch pattern that that I'm using on this because it gives a nice look it's not hard to do and it doesn't take up too much yarn now this I'm making out of a 34% cotton, 35% linen, 19 lysol, 11% cotton, 11% nylon, and this is a sport weight yarn, 351 yards on the ball, and this again, Audine Wool's interlock, but this is a cotton linen yarn from Knit Crate, not sponsored by Knit Crate at all. This is the colorway Beaches, and it's a beautiful color. It's a tan and very, very very tiny light kind of grayish brown mixed in there and I'll show you what it looks like worked up. This is just a double crochet for the bottom of the tee but this is what it looks like. I think I showed this before. It has a little bit of color pooling and the pooling is very very easy to see but there's not a lot of contrast between the two colors and this is the the yoke that I'm putting on this particular sweater. It's a stacked um, front post stitch alternating with another stitch on another row, but it's just, it's a, it's going to be kind of almost striped in the way of stitches. It's going to have stitch stripes in it <laughs> and not much of a, a neckline. I'm not going to put a very low neckline on here. It will probably be just a little bit of a scoop so that you can show off the yoke at the top. So I'm excited about this. I did, like I said, I did a row of this this morning and it's turning out very beautifully. I like the way that these stitches are stacked here and I'm trying to get them to go straight up in a yoke um, in a, from about here up. So that's the way this is going to be designed. And this is, a, like I said, a sport weight. So if you have some sport weight yarn lying around, you could certainly use it for this particular pattern. But right now, that's in the works. I haven't finished it. Of course, I'm not even close on that. But that's what I'm working on right now. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you how my diamond paintings look after they're framed. And I had someone frame these for me. So I did not do this work. And uh, I'd love to take credit for it, but I did not do this work. I'm going to put a picture in here of where I have this particular painting frame. Now this is my very first diamond painting. It's called Four Seasons Sparkle and it's up on the wall over my um, closet door in my office so I can see it all the time. I've got it hanging up over my door but right now I took it off there. I wanted to show you a picture of where it is though in, in uh, next to me here and then I'll show you what it looks like up close. This is it all framed up. It turned out really nice. I'm going to give you a far back look first and let you see how it looks. And then I'm going to get it right up here where you can see the frame. The frame is a one piece frame. This is not matted, but it's a one piece frame with a, a little bit of a, a, almost like a gray gold, what uh, inside frame looks like. And then the outside frame is blue and white and it's a very very light it's a white frame or off-white frame washed in blue and let me get that up there so you can see it it's just a little bit of blue in that frame and the reason I chose the blue with the lady's help at, at Hobby Lobby which is where I had these framed she suggested that all four of these trees have some blue in them and we thought we might take the blue out and put it in the frame and so she was exactly right I think it looks fine I'm not um, it, it was so hard to frame it because it was long and, and narrow and it has to be hung this way it can't be hung this way so I had to get it into a frame that wouldn't take up so much room because I'm gonna need this long uh, place to hang it so over a door seemed like a, a pretty good way to do it <laughs> so I decided to hang it over the door and again here is one of the trees that is the looks like the spring tree then the summer tree then the fall tree and then the winter tree and 
uh, I was just fascinated by this. I bought this at Mary Maxim, and uh, it's called Four Seasons Sparkle. And I went back out and tried to find it. It's a diamond painting by Diamond Dots, D-O-T-Z. And you might be able to find it on their website, diamonddots.com. I think they have their own website now. But again, this is not a full drill. A full drill would be the whole canvas would be covered with diamond dots. But this has a really pretty uh, canvas, a fabric canvas, and it has a little bit of a design to it. I don't know if you can see that. But it's almost like branches through here. And it's very beautiful. If you look at it for a little while, you see a lot of detail in there that I never even realized because the the one more time <laughs> the background of this tree is pink and it just fades into a green here and kind of a orangey color here i don't know if you can see all that but and the blue is back here so even the even the canvas is coordinated with the diamond dots i just thought that was beautiful it wasn't very expensive it might have been 15 dollars or something and um, the, the real expense was the frame, and I'll tell you how much that was. This particular frame for the Four Seasons Sparkle was $84.70. I know that's expensive. Um, you'd have to save up your pennies, which I did. I wanted to be sure I had enough money in my bank account to frame all three of these Diamond Dots paintings because they're my very first three that I've ever done. And I wanted to get them up on the wall, and I chose them to go up on the wall. I don't want them in a portfolio somewhere. So... That cost $84.70 at my Hobby Lobby, framed the way I had it framed. Moving on, this is the painting called Poppies, and it's from Leisure Arts. And you can see it over here. Uh, that is a, or it might be over here, I don't know which, but anyway, that that is on the wall where it looks. It's next to Mr. On the Hook's office and right next to the front door. And there was a wall there that was just perfect for it. So I chose to hunt, hang it there. And Mr. On the Hook said that was okay. He really liked looking at it when he went into his office. He's just too kind to me. But anyway, that is where I hung the painting. And I wanted to show you this up close. This I did have matted. This is matted in a navy blue that picks up the navy blue in the actual diamond painting. And then I had it framed in a wood frame. This is an actual wood frame and very, very nicely done. They all do a very, very nice job. And this also was not a full drill. This has some canvas showing. This is just a canvas, a fabric canvas, and it's beautiful too. It's a kind of a pink. So what we did was we decided to take the blue because there were too many pink and coral colors in here to define it with a matte. So we defined it with the navy blue and gave it a little bit of weight down here at the bottom because that's where most of the blue is actually. It's at the bottom of, of the picture. So this also blue has a white edging around it. That is not another matte. That's just the edge of the navy blue matte. So I thought that was a nice touch. It, it, it shines a little bit there. Now, the AB drills, and I forgot to show you this on the other one, but they're called AB drills, and that stands for Aurora Borealis, which is the beautiful night sky up north, and you can't see that just from everywhere. You have to be in a certain spot <laughs> to see it, but they're very beautiful. And the Diamond Dots people and Leisure Arts have um, created a, a drill, or a Diamond Dot, that has a covering on it and it has a special sheen to it when the light shines on it. So right here in the leaves in the white are AB drills and I so wish you could see that shine. It's really beautiful in the daylight. You can see it beautifully in the daylight. I don't know if you can see that here but there's a lot of sheen on this and I did actually um, finish these by sealing the, the diamond dots. I sealed all of this with some Mod Podge high gloss and I, I have a video about that as well on my channel. It's in the Diamond uh, Classic Diamond Arts playlist, but how to actually seal your, your diamond painting. And I sealed the Four Seasons as well, but this is just partially drilled, so I had to be careful not to get it on this. But even where I got it on that, you can't even see it because it dries clear, which is very, very nice. So anyway, this is my Poppy's um, diamond painting, and I'm really proud of it. It goes right by Mr. On the Hook's office. Well, last but not least, here is what my third diamond painting looks like on the wall. And it is in my living room by my chair, 
And uh, this is like, you know, the, the really the nicest one that I did because it's a full drill. It's covered entirely in um, diamond drills or diamond gems. You can call them all kinds of different things. But this is meat for lunch. You've seen this on my videos before if you watch me. And I chose to put this in a solid wood frame. I just was so proud of it. It took me a long time to do and I worked really, really hard on it. So I decided to just let it speak for itself. I put a wood frame on this and it turned out really nice. I didn't want to um, put it in a navy frame or put a navy mat on there like I did the poppies. It would look too similar to that. So I actually um, decided to put this in a wood frame and then pull out the brown which is down here at the bottom and of course that gives the picture some weight. So I thought that I would do that. Let me get this up here where you can see it. There's some brown down here and then I picked that up in the frame and there's the frame. That's what it looks like. It's a very, very beautiful frame. It has a decorative inside edge right there. It's, it's very, very nice. I like it and it looks really nice on my wall. It's not too big and it, it picks up the red in my sofa and also the, we have chairs in our living room that are this brown color and also a dark brown so that's what that looks like um, with the frame i hope you liked it i also sealed this one with the mod podge so it's not none of these have glass over the front none of them have glass i wanted them to be out where they could shine and they wouldn't be behind glass so if they get dusty i'll just wipe them off one thing i didn't do is tell you how much the uh, poppies were and that frame with the mat was 58 dollars all total and then the meat for lunch giraffe picture was 76.45 so all told i spent 239 dollars on frames that is a lot i realize that but i waited first of all and i had three of them done so I didn't do them one at a time, and it's a lot easier to save up for one frame at a time. I also um, was just so impressed by the young lady who helped me. I took all three of these in at the same time, and she was um, just willing to spend all the time I wanted to find the right frame and mat for, for these paintings. And I have a picture of her. I'm going to put the picture next to me here of, uh, a little, of this young lady. And she was so sweet I, I i asked if i could take a picture of her and she said she had to take it in her mask because she was mandated to wear a mask at work i did not have a mask on but she had a mask on so we took a a selfie of ourselves and while we were working on selecting the frame so she was very helpful and i appreciate it so much so much again that was at hobby lobby they have a very nice framing department i'm sure you can find one other places but I just know when I go in there that I'm going to be helped and I'm not going to be pressured. She didn't pressure me at all about which frame to select. She gave me lots of choices and when I asked for her advice she gave it to me but she was not um, telling me which one I should pick. So that was really nice. I really enjoyed going there and I felt good about the frames that I chose and they look beautiful on my wall as well. I've had a lot of interest in the giveaway that I'm doing this week. Now I'll be picking the winner on Monday uh, with the random comment picker of course and this is for the Cotton Fair yarn and it's a size 2 cotton yarn by Premier and some people said that they found this color at Premier in a larger yarn and I believe it's called Americana. I don't know that but I know that Red Heart Super Saver has also uh, red, white, and blue as well. So you can try those if you want, or you can do a red and white stripe or blue and red stripe and an edging on a tank top and you'll have it. And that's a, a really nice gift because this does not exist anymore <laughs> on the market. I mean, as it is, uh, Cotton Fair. I really like the Cotton Fair yarn and I, Felt like I wanted to give that away to, uh, to a lucky winner. So I'm going to do that and give away a printed copy of the America Tank. This has been on my Etsy shop for a long time. And I've sold lots of those patterns because y'all really liked it. And I think, I think it's a great pattern. You can do all kinds of things with it as well. Make it out of different yarn. But this is the perfect yarn for that particular tank. So uh, if you can find some Cotton Fair in red or blue or white you can do that and then trim it in an opposite color and that will get you the same effect 
a red, white, and blue top that you can wear many times during the year for patriotic holidays. I don't want this video to get too long, but I do want to show you the progress I've made on my garden at Argentui by Monet in my diamond painting that I'm working on right now for summer with the masters. So let's go to my work table and I'll show you the progress that I've made on that. Okay, here we are at my work table and let me show you this. This is all the colors that go into this particular diamond painting and this is what they look like. They're quite gorgeous. All of them are really pretty. Now right now I'm not working on a gorgeous part. I'm working on the um, right side of the painting and let me just show you what I've done. I've, I've discovered that taking a big section is not a good idea. I did this at first and I did finish this part and as I'm, I was moving up here I just burnt out. So I decided to go over on this side of the painting and I'm moving up the right side. So actually it, the painting goes this way. This is the top and this is the bottom. And here are the two people that are in the painting. And if you've seen my painting, and I'll try to put one along the side here so you can see what the painting looks like. This is the right side of the painting and moving up. Now last night I worked on this and this is again on the right side of the painting. So I'm moving my way up the side of the painting. And let me get down here where you can see this. I've got all these filled in. Now up here, I have some spots that are open still, but I'll put those in later. This is moving up the right side of the painting. These are all filled in. And here are the two figures here, moving up. And this is where I stopped, right in here. I did a little of this last night, and I'll probably finish this tonight and move on to the next square. And the next square is, or the next portion, is right here. And then in the next portion after that, let me just show you this where, where I'm going with this. The next portion is the sky. And this is the edge of the painting up here at the top. So this is uh, the top right corner. See my little note there, TR. This is the top right corner. And then I will move on to the next section, which will be up here on this side. So I'm really excited about this. I didn't think I would be, but I have put in a lot of time on that. I am keeping my time on my phone, and I have, an app, I have an app on here called Time Tracker, and it's free. You just go out and load it onto your phone, and when you're doing a project, even if you're crocheting, for example, you can keep your time on that particular job, is what they call it on the, the app, and you can name the job, like on this, uh, on my diamond painting I'm calling it garden and every time I start working on it I go to the app I call up garden which is the job that I'm using and then I click clock in now and I clock in now and then I can you know go leave the app and go and do other things and then when I'm ready to stop I go out to the app and I hit clock out and it keeps your time automatically it's a great idea if you want to say I'm going to make a sweater and I want to see how long it takes me to make this sweater and you can use that app and you'll know exactly how many hours and minutes that you spent working on it. And I just think it's a great idea. I want to know how long it's going to take me to do this huge diamond painting that I have selected. I'm still waiting on my girl with a pearl earring. It has not come. It's been close to three weeks now. And I gave up on it and I decided to do this for Summer with the Masters. So I might get the other one out just to kind of get a look at it and I'll unbox it and show it to you when it does arrive. So anyway, I hope that you had a wonderful, wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend as well and you'll be back here Monday. So join me then and let's find out what's on the hook.